Hallelujah. How great is our God, right? Hey, he has given us another day, another day to be alive, another day so we can say his name. So everyone that is here and those of, us, those of you that are online, just we welcome you to the Impact Center and let's worship the King together. So I'm going to read from Psalms 148. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highs above. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly hosts. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all your you shining stars. Praise him, you highest heavens and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For at his command, they were created, and he established them forever and ever. He issued a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great creature, sea creatures, and all the ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his uh, bidding. You mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and cattle, small creatures and flying birds, kings of the earth and all nations, you princes and rulers on earth, your men and women, all men and children, let us praise the name of the Lord. So this morning we say, thank you, Jesus. We praise your holy name. We worship you, Lord. We give you thank you for giving us another opportunity. Holy Spirit, have it your way. We want the Holy Spirit fire this morning. We want the Holy Spirit fire this morning. And we praise the name of the King because because of him we have freedom. So let's go and give him your highest praise. Because he is worthy, he is worthy to be praised. Let's say hallelujah to the name of the Lord. Let's say hallelujah because in him we are free. Let's say hallelujah because it's because of him we have joy. We praise the King. We praise the King. We praise the King. Hallelujah.
one Father, just as you are in me, and I'm in you, may they, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have, have sent me. Heavenly Father, I want to give you honor. We want to glorify your name. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in this place. We declare and we declare, no weapon shall prosper this place. Holy Spirit, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Send fire to this place. Send fire, fire to this place. We need your help. We need your help, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. You welcome, you rule and reign. Have your way. You the Alpha, you the Omega, you the beginning of the end. Thank you, Holy Spirit, to wake us up, to help you through this week. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I plead the blood of Jesus. I send angels to watch over and protect us. Give you the wisdom. Give you the wisdom. Give you revelation. Speak to who you have to speak today. Bring you revelation. Please you with your blood. Please you with your blood. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way. Have your way. Send fire. Burn us. Burn us. Burn us. Consume you. Consume me. Consume us with your fire. Consume you with your fire. Everything I ask you in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a day it is to be in the house of and God is good. God is always good. God is always on time. There's not nothing he can do. There's not a promise that he cannot keep. Father God, on this day, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory and all the praise for the things that you do in our lives and the things that you will continue to do in our lives, Father God. Father God, we pour out our praises to you, Father God. May our praises be a sweet fragrance that you can smell high up in heaven here down on earth, Father God. Father God, continue to work on the lost hearts, the lost minds, the hardened hearts that are out there, Father God. Continue to bring your sons, your daughters home to your kingdom, to your love, to your mercy, Father God. Father God, you are the alpha. You are the Omega, the beginning and the end, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father God, we call on all the nations and tongues on the north, the south, and the east and the west to rise up in freedom, Father God, and to get ready for a battle against the enemy. Because no weapon shall prosper against any of your sons and daughters as long as we are covered in your love and your name, in your mercy, Father God. In this place, I ask for a hedge of protection to be sent down and for the angels to cover this place of your love, Father God. Father God, continue to work on us and in us so we can continue to bring the hardened hearts home and the lost souls home to your kingdom, Father God. We lift your name up high in the sky with our hands and our hearts held high, Father God. Father God, in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Lord, we hunger for you this morning. Lord, we want to feel your presence. Lord, bring that holy rain. Lord, wash us anew again, Lord God. Lord, we lift you up this morning, Lord. Lord, let our, let our feet be divided by you, Lord. Move in this house, Lord. Move in this place. Lord, we're ready for that new sound. For that frequency, God. Move how you want to move, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
So come and move. We're all ears. So come and move. Come and move, God. So come and move. We're all ears. Come and move. Come and move, Holy Spirit. Come and move. We're all ears. Father God, we say it is an honor and a privilege to be before your presence. Saturate this place with your presence. Almighty God, we just want you. We just want you. We only need you. Here we are, Lord, having your way in our life. Having your way in our life. We want to rest up on you. We want to rest on you, oh Lord. So we surrender. We surrender our will. We surrender our entire life to you, Lord. Every living thing shall worship you. Every mountain will worship you. Every rock every valley every single thing that was created by you it is a testament of your greatness thank you lord because we can see your mighty power your love we can see your face and everything that you have created and we say thank you because you are giving us that opportunity to enjoy your creation. And we say, Lord, it is an honor and a privilege to be before your presence. We never want to take your name lightly. So lead us and guide us, Holy Spirit. So we can treat our Father in heaven, with dignity and respect, with humility, with honor, because everything we do is for His glory. Everything we do is for His glory. It is not for me. It is not for the neighbor. It is to glorify the name of the King. It is to exalt His it is for Him all the glory and all the praise. It is for the Most High God. And we say, Jesus, come down today, Jesus, and have it your way in this house. Have it your way in this house. Zerubbabel. 
relationship with you, to love you and to worship you. And Father, I lift your name, Father, and I praise you, Father. Father, I ask that you let your presence be known to everybody in this room. Father, that no one leaves here the way they came in, Father. That each person has an intimate experience with you, Father. That their lives are changed from being in here, Father. And I know that you can, and I thank you, Father, and I love you, Father. For there is none greater than you. Oh, yes, let's say that gold is not by mind, nor by power. by power but by mind spirit not by mind nor by power but by mind spirit not by mind nor by power
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's go hard for the Lord, our Lord God. Let's give it up to our Lord God. Heavenly Father, come on. Come on, let's give it one time for the Father. Come on, let's give two times for the, for the Son, our Savior. And three times for the Holy Spirit. Father God. If we walk in the fear of the Lord, here we say, oh yeah. If we walk in the freedom of the Lord, and we say, oh yeah. Oh yeah. If we walk in the victory of the Lord, and we say, oh yeah. We walk in submission of the Lord, and we say, oh yeah. We walk in the victory of the Lord, and we say, oh yeah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you we thank you for the strength that you give us. We thank you that for the courage that you give us and the freedom that you allow us to walk this earth, Father God. Father God, we give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. We thank you for being a gracious Father. We thank you for sending your only Son to die on the cross for our sins our salvation, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Father God. Come on, let's go. How precious it is to wake up every morning and open up that Bible and read his word. How precious it is to be before his presence and enjoy our time with him how precious it is to be led by the spirit of god how precious it is to wake up any morning and say have it your way jesus have it your way how precious it is to receive the, the promise of the father which is the spirit of the lord I don't want anything else. We don't want anything else but just your spirit. The spirit of truth. The one, the only one who speaks the truth. The only one who will teach us everything about the Father. The one that brings us closer to Him. How wonderful and precious. It is to enjoy the promises and we say Lord thank you for loving us thank you for loving us thank you because in the middle of the storm you say just trust me thank you because if there's any confusion you say just trust in me Lean not in your own understanding. Thank you, because every answer that we need, it is in your spirit. Thank you, it is a privilege. So we say in this house, we do not take your name. We do not take your presence for granted. And we say, Holy Spirit, we want more. We want more. We're not going to stop until we get more of you. Until we get more of you. We want more of you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you. 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 just want more of you today oh god we just want you and nothing else matters oh god 
we are decreeing and declaring like Hannah did that there is no one like you. There is no one like you. You are the king of the universe. You are the king of all kings. You are the Lord of all lords. You are the Alpha. You are the Omega. You are the beginning and you are the end. And we exalt you. We lift you on high, oh God. There is no one like you. There is no one like you. We just want more. We just want more. We want more of you, Father. We just want you. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we came here to, to praise you, Lord, and to worship you, Lord. We want to dwell in your presence, Lord, and give you glory and give you honor, Lord. We don't deserve it, but you give it to us out of love, Lord, out of grace. And we praise your name, Lord, for sitting on high, Lord, and taking care of us, Lord. Even when we feel like we're going to fall down, Lord, you're there to catch us, Lord. You're there to catch us and to, and to give us help and to continue to push us forward, Lord. And we give you glory for all of the love that you have given to us, Lord. For you sent your son to die on the cross for us, Lord. I can't imagine how hard that is. But you loved us enough to do it, Lord. And we give you glory, Lord, for everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, everything that you will continue to do, Lord. Because everything that you do, Lord, is right and righteous, Lord. So we walk, Lord, in your name, Lord. We operate in your name, Lord, with the Holy Spirit flowing through us, Lord giving us the words to come out, Lord. So speak through us, Lord. Operate through us, Lord, that we may give you glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. So let everything that has bread praise the Lord. We praise Him wherever. We praise Him with our music. We praise Him day and night. We praise Him every morning. We praise Him. That's what we do. difficulties, praise Him. In the midst of challenges, praise Him. Give it all to Him. Praise Him. Because He deserves all the glory. Praise the Lord on our soul. Praise Him. Give it me. Father, like children, 
without a care of who's to the left or who's to the right of us or who's watching us. Lord, we just want our focus to be on you this morning. We want our focus to be on you this morning. The great and mighty one, the great and mighty one, the great and mighty one. We want our focus, God. Take our attention to you, Lord. Take our attention to you, Lord, just like a child. Free, free to worship their king. Free to worship their king, their father, their Abba. We say, Lord, that you are the one, the great and mighty one. Our focus and our attention is on you, Lord. You have our ear. You have our ear. For the Lord says, I don't want your sacrifices. I don't want your performance. I don't want your entertainment. All I'm asking is for your obedience. Will you give me your obedience this morning? Don't give me something that you've mustered up. Don't give me something that you pre-planned, that you read instructions. No, give me what I'm asking you for. Don't be like Saul who gave me something that did not cost him anything. I desire a pure and holy worship. I want purity. I want obedience to be released. Shake up the ground of all our traditions. Break down the walls of all my religions. We say, Lord, your way is better. 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 Shake it up. Shake it up in us, Lord. Shake it up in us, Lord. All these mindsets, all these traditions, I just sense the Lord heavy this morning. Break it off of us, God. Break it off of us, God. I lift my hands because I need it broken off too, Lord. Break it off of us, Lord. Break off all these traditions, all these mindsets, all of these religious ways, Lord. We're asking you, God, to break it off. 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 Just begin touch your head and say, Lord, break it off of me this morning. Break off these traditions. Break off these mindsets. Break off my opinions. Break off these things that I think that it should go this way and that way, Lord. And we say, Lord, that your way is better. We're declaring it in the house today that your way is better. Your way, your way, your way is better. Your way is better. the ground of all these traditions and break down the walls of all this religious way shake up the ground of all my traditions and break down the walls of all the religious ways shake up the
morning in this house, God. Your way is so much better. Your way is so much better. We say that we can't even move without Holy Spirit because His way is so much better. Your way is so much better, Lord. are open our hearts are open stir up the gifts this morning Lord stir up the gifts of the Spirit of God for we know that you're here and you're moving we know that you're here and you're moving in this place Listen to what you were instructed. Stir up the gift within you. And if you know you have a word from the Lord, you need to come up and you need to go ahead and release it. You guys mind if a first timer talks? You guys call this time tribal prayer, right? In the ancient world, Yahweh, and don't you love that name? Yahweh would have been seen as just another tribal God. But when Aaron and Moses were contending with Pharaoh, that Yahweh said, tonight I will have my victory over all the gods of the Egyptians. Over all the gods of the Egyptians. And he is executing that victory today. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, the victory is ours. Yes, Lord. Come on, that's the word of the Lord. Yes. 
victory is in the house. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the word that in the midst of war, we hear the sound of victory. We hear the sound of victory. And we are a people that in the war, we war in victory. But the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, come, 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 come. No spirit, but the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit, come, 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 come. No spirit, but the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit come, 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 come. No spirit, but the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit come, 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 Nothing but your presence, Holy Spirit. Nothing but your presence, Holy Spirit. Do it like only you can. We say God. Do it like you can, Holy Spirit. We call on you, Holy Ghost. Fall in this place. Fall in this place, Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit. Holy Ghost. But the Holy Spirit come, come, have access. Come. come, come, come. Show up and show out. No spirit, but the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit come. Fear of the Lord. Give us the 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 fear of
But by the Spirit of the Lord. It's only by your Spirit. Only by your Spirit. Only by your Spirit. It's only by your Spirit. We are healed today, yes. It's only by your spirit, it's only by your spirit that we are here today. Oh Lord, yes. it's only by your spirit, it's only by your spirit that we are free, that we are free, that we are free in Him today. It's only by your spirit, it's only by your spirit that we can praise you, oh God. Oh, we can praise you. Oh, not by my, not by power, but by the spirit of the Begin to raise your hands. Begin to tell him how much he means to you. Oh, we welcome you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you. We welcome you from the north, the south, the east, and the west to come and have your way. You can rule. You can reign. You can rule. You can reign in this place. You are. We love you, we honor you, we honor you, the King of all kings, for you are worthy, you are the only one that's worthy of our praise, you are the only one that's worthy, you are the only one that's worthy, and you are welcome here to have your way in us today, oh God, we say come, we say come God and change our minds, we say come and change our hearts, God, that we will not leave the same way that we came in, oh God, if anyone can do it, it's you, God, if anyone can do it, it's you, oh God, we trust in you, we have faith in you, God, we know that you can do it, you can do it, oh God, you can do it, oh God. You can do whatever you want to, oh God. We say, come. You can have your way. You can do whatever you want, oh God, this morning. We are saying, come, you're welcome. Your presence is welcome here, oh God, this morning. If you're not welcome anywhere else in this city, oh God, you are welcome here. You are welcome here, oh God. your name, Lord. Oh, I want to bless his name. I want to bless his name. We bless your name, God. Oh, the victory of his spirit. I love that, God. Thank you for sharing that word with us this morning. The victory of the spirit of God.
the Lord, you heavenly host. Bless the Lord, all you his angels. And let all the earth sing forth his praise. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on.
something to you. Let me tell you about what's happening in hell right now. The devil doesn't know what to do because there was a word that said that we have the victory and the devil is saying, wait a minute, I have hit their finances, I've hit their bodies, I've hit their marriages, I've hit their children. And yet, they're giving me a praise like the victory is already theirs. What are we going to do? We're going to praise him. Come on. Praise is my weapon. And worship is my warfare. Praise is my weapon, and worship is my warfare. I got one question. I got a question. Pastor Rosa, the enemy tried to take your marriage, and yet today you're celebrating that you're still married. Try to take your wife, and yet she's still here. Come on. So many of you, you are bound, bound by tradition, bound by religiosity, bound by the attacks of the devil, and yet you're still praising him. Can we just give him a little dance? Listen. I'm going to put her out there. Can I put somebody on blast? Come on. Come on. Do it. Lainey, you were supposed to be dead. And on a Sunday morning, God spoke. And you're here today. Why? Because the devil tried to take your promise. And God said, not on my watch. Give them crazy praise. Worship is my warfare, and praise is my weapon, and worship is my warfare, and praise is my weapon, and worship is my warfare, and praise is my weapon, and worship is my warfare, and praise is my weapon, and worship is my warfare. Weapon. And worship is my weapon. And worship is my warfare. And praise is my weapon. And worship 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 is my
worship is my warfare. Okay, okay. I'm going to take it to my house. Say, to your house. I said, my house. Denise, the enemy's trying to take mama's mind. But he's not going to take her mind. He's not going to take what rightfully belongs to her. So listen. I said, if there's anybody here that loves my mama, don't swallow. Let your hands up. A crazy crazy. Worship is my warfare. Good praise is my weapon. Good worship is my warfare. And praise is my weapon. Good worship is my warfare. Good praise is my weapon. And worship is my warfare. Report. Just bring it down a little bit so I can hear. Woo! About two weeks, we went to the Kiowa tribe and we, we had a revival because Apostle was sensing. Now, you guys don't have to go anywhere. We don't, we don't want it to stop of what God's doing here. But when Apostle was led to go and have a revival and they opened it up for us and we went in, we had a two-day revival and on the second day, we wind up, there were several apostles and, and a few others prayed for this man with throat cancer. And when we were packing up and we were leaving and I went over and I kind of visited with him. And he began to tell me, he said, this week I have to go into the hospital because they're going to do a plan. Because they're going to put a feeding tube in me. They're going to have to pull all my teeth out because I have throat cancer. I'm not going to be able to eat through my mouth anymore. And he said, so we're going to have to go in, make a plan. They're going to put a feeding tube in me. This is what's going to be done. And I remember Apostle telling him, you may not throw it up right now, but during the week, you might just be eating. You might burp it up. You might whatever it up, but it's going to come out. We get a call yesterday that the man went in to see the doctor they can't find a trace of cancer. Now that's miracle number one. Back in December, we went to the Kawa tribe. We sang for the elders. And we began to pray for another lady that had cancer. The same day, we get a call. There's no trace of cancer. Tell me my God is not our God. I'm telling you, when you begin to open your mouth, you begin to praise, you begin to worship like never before, like David. Watch what he's going to do for you. Because we have the victory. Because we have the victory. Because he's won. Because he's won, yes. Oh, we have the victory. Oh, we have the victory. Oh, we have the victory, oh, we have the victory, cause he's won. 
Jesus is lifted high. 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 Come on, just some voices. Jesus is lifted high. 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 Come on, give him a praise. Give him a praise. He's worthy to be praised. Let's lift him high. Lift him high. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on, let's not get quiet. Let's give it praise. Hallelujah. He said it in his word. If my name be lifted up, I will draw all men. Lift up the name of Jesus, for he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be exalted. Every demon has to flee. too long No more time to waste And though we've been asleep You've been stirring us to wake Now we give our lives to this See the coming of your glory. Full of faith, we press on. Now we're never going back. Let the heavens open up and your spirit pour. Let the heavens open up and your spirit pour. Destiny be released today. Let the heavens open up and your spirit pour out. Let the heavens open up and your spirit pour out. Destiny be released today. We want revival now. We want your spirit pour out. We will stop till we see it come. We want revival now. We want your spirit pour out. We've settled for too long Now there's no more time to waste And though we've been asleep You've been stirring us to waste Let the heavens open up. 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 Let the heavens open up.
I just sense this morning that God has been so good and he's been so faithful in so many ways that sometimes we don't give him enough credit. Sometimes we don't give him enough thanks. But God is desiring us. He's desiring all of us this morning. And I just, I just want us to just raise our hands this morning and begin to tell him how much we love him, how much we're thankful, how much we're, we are so grateful for another day of life. Some of us in this room shouldn't even be here today. Some of us in this room, we shouldn't be married today still, but God. We love you, Lord, because your mercy never fails us, because this is the goodness of God this morning.
with you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me, and all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, and I will see of the goodness of God. Let's sing it again. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. And I will see of the goodness of God. All my life and I be faithful. All my life and I be so, so good. But I be brave and I be faithful. your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest night you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender. Surrender now, I give. 
You've been so faithful. You've been so, so good. Pastora, can you just sing it? Ben and I sing a little bit more. Come on, about the goodness of God. Listen. I'm grateful for the mothers. I'm grateful for the fathers. Minister Willie, you ministered to me by saying that. But it's been Jesus. It's Jesus. He's been so, so good to us. Come on. Come on, the goodness of God. Every time that you're able... on has any anybody experienced the goodness of God here this morning so many here within the sound of my voice and watching us God has been so faithful even when we didn't deserve it even while we were God haters he was still faithful and he's still faithful and he's going to be faithful for he is God and God alone. Can we just give him a hand of praise? Can we give him a shout? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can we get some lights as well? He is faithful. That's why we were able to turn on the lights. Come on, y'all didn't hear me. I said he was 
He's faithful and we got lights on. We got a roof over our head. God, he's faithful. Hallelujah. Man, I, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm, God is doing some miraculous things in our lives. And I'm just overwhelmed by what he's doing. Denise, victory is ours, girl. Denise, I said victory is ours. Y'all need, look, I'm not just saying it for Denise, but somebody in this place has to get a hold of that. That victory is ours. So many people get so wrapped up on what they see, but he says to walk by faith and not by sight. Boy, y'all going to get me started. I'm about to preach something up in this place. Holy Ghost is in this house. Listen, I said Holy Ghost is in this house. I said the Holy Ghost is in this house. And he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy for us to get excited about his presence. If I can have all the kids make their way up here. And as they're coming up, I want to say happy Happy anniversary to Pastora Rosa and Minister Keith, Minister Terrence and Yolanda. Come on. Listen, I, I know both their marriage should have been done. And I'm not going to tell you any details because I know y'all want to know because y'all get kind of nosy. Wait a minute, Pastora, no. But God. But God. I also want to say happy anniversary to you, because tomorrow is 35 years. But God! It is but God, because I, I don't know how, but without God, we would have never made it to 35 years. But only God can do what he's doing and have us to be standing before you ministering the gospel but God and whatever situation you're facing just look at that situation and just say but God oh y'all just Lord come help me out help me out somebody but God sometimes we just got to get a little attitude with the devil amen so uh, let me have, uh, matter of fact, Pastor Rosa, come pray for all these kids. But God. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the privilege to come one more day into your house to worship you and to glorify your holy and mighty name, Lord. Father, I thank you for our kids, Father. I thank you, Father, for the plan and destiny that you have over every one of them, Lord, because you have been calling them with a great purpose. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on, can y'all say amen for all our little ones? Amen. Glory to God. Lord, I thank you for their lives. How many of y'all know what time is it? Time to get what? Time to get what? Time to get happy. Time to get hilarious about giving on to the things of the Lord. Amen. Because he's been faithful to give on to us. And I am so grateful God is moving miraculously. So uh, as you stand to your feet, I know some of you may have been a little uh, wore out from all the worship. May have sweated a little bit extra. Listen, God will replenish you. Father God, we thank. Matter of fact, Prophet Karina, would you come and release? Lord, we thank you. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Cross the aisle. Shake somebody's hand. Let them know, man, I'm glad you showed up this morning. Give them some love. We've gone through a transition. 
God is shifting things here at the Impact Center, as most of you know, that there's changes and transitions that are always happening. And we're excited for you to be a part of our Tick Week. On Sundays, we come together at 10 o'clock for our tribal prayer time, ushering the presence of the Holy Spirit. And then at 1030 starts our worship. And I want to invite you to come and be a part of that intimate gathering that we have corporately and be able to worship God with us as one. Also, a part of our Tick Week is on Mondays at 6 p.m. We have three great, great classes that I strongly suggest for you to come and be a part of. It is the Book of John, Spiritual Authority. Come on now, that, that's got to excite somebody that's listening. And then just Impact Basics, the simpleness about why we're here. Why is the impact here? Why are we at Apostolic Center? I encourage you to come and find out and be a part of one of these three classes. But guess what? It doesn't end there. Tick Week goes on. On Wednesday nights, come on somebody, on Wednesday nights, we're having more training. And it starts at 6 p.m. again. And it's Holy Spirit and faith that moves. Come on. We know that we have to have faith to move the mountains. We know that we have to have faith because it is what pleases God. And what better way? Faith moves. And then Holy Spirit, the one that we have been given by God, sending His Spirit. Why not learn about who He is and who He is in our lives and how we can keep Him activated daily? So again, I want to encourage you. Yes, we've made some changes, but listen. We're on the move on what God wants us to do. And our Tick Week starts again Sunday at 10 a.m. And then Mondays at 6 p.m. And then again on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. So I just want to encourage you to get connected with one of these classes. Again, it's the Book of John, Spiritual Authority, Impact Bases on Monday. And then Wednesdays, Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Holy Spirit himself. And then faith that moves. I just trust that you guys are going to hear from the Holy Spirit himself to come and be a part of the Tick Tribe. Come to the Impact Center where Jesus reigns. Hello everyone. I'm Minister Joseph here uh, from the Impact Center where Jesus reigns. And right now I'm the Kingdom Warriors man uh, leader. And I just wanted you to invite you to our Kingdom Warriors gathering, which is every fourth Saturday of each month, and we start at eight o'clock. It doesn't matter from where, where you're from. If you're from uh, Oklahoma City, Texas, just come down here and, and gather with us. And one of the things that we teach our men is how uh, not only to get closer to God, but also to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. We also teach the men on how to be a leader in their families and a leader in their community. So come down here. Uh, uh, and join us, you won't regret it. God bless you. Hey, y'all, I'm Crystal, and this is Alexander, and we are the, the Youth, Youth Leaders. Leaders. So, this is an invitation to our Impact Youth Night. Minister Crystal, when is it? It is every third Friday of the month at 6 p.m. Mm, and it's our time to hang out with you, the Impact Youth, and us as your leaders to equip train you in the word of God, and prepare you for the transition to adulthood. I know I'm going to be there. You going to be there? I'm going to be there. We'll see you there. You going to be there? we have here at the Impact Center.
grace, the one that you sent for us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Listen, I, I'm going to let y'all know something super quick, super quick, is we're, we're doing a 30% off on tick merchandise. Oh, some of y'all, oh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad somebody got excited. We can go back to full price, you know, but 30% off. So uh, after the gathering, go on in there, get you something and something. If not for you, get it for somebody else. Bless somebody. Amen. It's better to give than to receive. I'm just saying. And then I want to encourage you next Sunday. Somebody say next Sunday. Look at your neighbor and put your finger out like this. Don't put it in their face. Just point at them and say, next Sunday, Sunday. we're going to be feeding. No, I didn't say tell them all that. I just said, just tell them next Sunday. Sunday. And I encourage y'all to come. Our first fruits, we're going to be breaking bread. Um, if If you want any direction about it, don't come see me. Go see your pastora. Amen? I just encourage you to come, be a part of it, you know, break bread with us, build relationship, don't come to fellowship, this ain't potluck, there's no leprechaun at the end of the food line, this is a time to build relationship, amen? So I encourage you to come, bring somebody and let them know that it's happening at the Impact Center where Jesus, all right, well three weeks ago. I started talking about he showed up and he showed out, talking about the Holy Ghost himself. Then, believe it or not, I planned to talk about him the second week again. However, he showed up and he showed out. And he did. He did it in in the fashion that he knows. And listen, in this place, if you come with a preconceived idea that it's supposed to go this way and and then this and then that, you're going to leave here with a flat balloon. Amen? So I want to attempt to continue to talk about the Holy Ghost again. Listen, I'm not here to talk about me. I'm grateful for what God's doing through our ministry and and the doors that he's opening up and the things that we get to be a part of. But listen, I give him all the glory. I get, he is worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be excited uh, for us to just let out a shout of praise, for us to get our Holy Ghost party on, for us to scream a little bit, for us to sweat a little bit. Listen, we used to sweat to the oldies. Why not sweat to the Holy Ghost? Amen? So... Um, I, I am really excited for what God's doing. I mean, when has it ever been in, in my, I didn't even process all the anniversaries in just two days. Man, that, that's exciting for me. Maybe I don't get excited, but to be married to my wife for 35 years, son. For, yeah, that's what I said, Teacher Charmaine. It is. It's a blessing to be married to you, woman of God. And man, I am more in love with you than I was 35 years ago. Son, I get excited to roll over and, okay, praise the Lord. <laughs> glory, glory. So I want to talk to you. And I, I want to, I'm going to start it. I guess I started it, like I said, three weeks ago. But I'm going to title this Unlimited Power. I want to talk about the unlimited power of the Holy Ghost. It's, it's, it, it will be a series. Um, I don't know how long we'll go, but we'll go until he says, okay, change it. Because we're in the midst of a lot of changes. We're in the midst of crossing over. We're in the midst of knocking on the door to Passover. And we've got to understand that every time that we're passing over, there's a crossover. We received the prophetic word. Pastora got somebody who sent her a word dealing with the crossover. And we've got to look at and understand that in our lives, in this walk with the Lord, we can't get to a place of just settling. I know that rocks some of y'all. Because sometimes we just want to stay there, Pastor Rosa. And we have the perception, well, this is so good. But listen, there's better. I don't know about you, it's better. Because I could have said that 35 years ago. Man, this is so good. And just stayed it there. 
But ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, it has just gotten better. Man, it has gotten better. So we have to understand that there's an ultimate power. Who is the Holy Ghost to you? That's my question. Who is the Holy Ghost to you? In your opinion, who do you believe that the Holy Ghost is? What do you think is his purpose in your life? Holy Ghost? The it? Is it a thing? A ghostly figure like Casper the Friendly Ghost? Is it something people talk about but you've never experienced for yourself? Something that only brings chaos? Listen, and I'm telling you, when the Holy Ghost comes, there's chaos. If you're trying to keep your weave in place, your toupee, if you're trying not to sweat your makeup off, if you're trying to keep your house in order, Holy Ghost brings chaos. Come on, somebody. Is it just a feeling of goosebumps? Is it, ter- is it you tearing up and crying and a tear running down your cheek? Something that makes you feel weak and pushes you down when somebody prays for you? Something windy or misty in the room? Something that makes you talk a little funny? What is the Holy Ghost to you and what is his purpose? So let me share with you who Jesus says the Holy Ghost is to you and me because he is none of the above according to Jesus. If you have a perception and you believe that the Holy Ghost is just speaking in tongues, let me tell you, he is so much more. So let me take you to the word because I know some of you want to hear the word and that's good. I love it. I love talking about the word. But I really enjoy talking to you about what did Jesus say? Because Jesus literally gives us a picture of who he is. And when I say he, I'm talking about the third person of the Trinity and his name is the Holy Ghost. So in John chapter 14, starting at verse 15, because there is something that we must do for it, for the Holy Ghost to enter in, to find that place of rest within us. And it's right here in verse 15. It says, if you really love me, that's key. And we need to understand that it's a major key because if we can say, I love Jesus, we can go around and say, I'm a Jesus follower. I love him with everything that's in me. But do you show the demonstration that you're in love with him? Hmm. You keep and obey my commandments. So listen. What Jesus said in most Bibles, it's written in red. It says, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commandments. So it's not just keeping them, it's obeying them. It's not being able to just quote it and say it. And No, but you're obeying. That means your lifestyle represents that you're keeping his commandments. Then he says in verse 16, and I will ask, I, Jesus, will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper. Ladies and gentlemen, how many of you want another helper? Because I'm here to tell you, if it wasn't for the helper, a lot of us wouldn't be here today. I said a lot would not be here today. But the goodness of the word is when you study it and you break it down, you find out What does he mean by another helper? A comforter, an advocate, an intercessor counselor, a strengthener, stand by. I love the amplified version that breaks it down so that we understand 
that he's not just a helper. He's not just one that gives you a handout. Oh, that's not just what he's here for. Literally, Jesus gave us his job description. He's here. A lot of people, and we understand that people say, oh, well, Jesus is with me. If you don't know, the Bible says that he is sitting at the right hand of God. And he told the disciples, look, I got to row. I got to bounce. I I did what I'm supposed to do. I've got to go back. And sit at the right hand of the Father. Because that's where I'm going to intercede for you. But listen, because you know, they, they, they got all panicked. Like some are right now feeling, oh, I thought Jesus was with me. That's what that, my past pastor said. Listen. He said, I would never leave you or what? I love it. Abandon you. Because he sent the Holy Ghost to live and reside on the inside of us. That's why he was able to say, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to leave you alone. You're not naked out there. Because I am sending you the helper, the comforter, one that's going to advocate. For some of you that have never been to court, he's the best thing happening today when you go to court. Because you can go into court in the natural, but there's a spiritual court in the courts of heaven. And he is advocating, he is defending us, he is standing up for us when what? When we live and love Jesus. And obey and keep his commandments. So he says, why does he send them? To be with you forever. Literally. The Holy Ghost is here living in us forever. Look, I understand we can have some really good musicians. We could pay for some musicians. But you can't pay for the anointing. We can pay for good gifts, and some of y'all have. Believe me, I know in 35 years, I've paid for some good gifts, but I can't pay for the anointing. Why? Because it's God's, and he's invested it in us. Amen? Amen. Verse 17, the spirit of truth, whom the world can't receive. And take into its heart. The world doesn't understand. When all of a sudden somebody, like Pastor, I was telling y'all, this man had throat cancer. And all of a sudden, I'm there and I'm praying for him. And I literally see the cancer moving in his throat. And I don't know, Pastor Rosa, I was like, Rrr. Because he grabbed it, and it's moving. And here's what she didn't tell you. He was not a believer. (laughs) He was not a believer. He was a God hater. Because if your life doesn't belong to Jesus, you hate God. Oh, I know some of y'all are like, no, I'm just telling you. That's the reality of it. As a God hater, God still performed a miracle in his life. Why? Because he had faith that when we were praying, that God would do something. And I know some of y'all thinking, no, he had to get saved first. Listen, I didn't lead him through a prayer of salvation. Because in Scripture, there is no prayer of salvation. He said, if you confess with your mouth, oh, I'm teaching you some word. He didn't do that before we prayed for him. And yet, God in his sovereignty, through the power of the Holy Ghost, healed this man. (sighs) 
I'm trying to tell y'all. And the thing is, it's not over. It's not over. There's more to come to those who believe. Amen? So it goes on to say, because it does not see him or know him. But you, say me. Look at your neighbor and say you. Know him. Because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. Listen, it's not like he just leaves. He doesn't leave. Just because the atmosphere changes, just because you're at work, just because you're pushing a buggy at Ross's, doesn't mean he's left. See, we have this perception, this idea that, oh, if I stop praying, he leaves. Mm -mm. No, It, it says it right there, continually. He stays with you. He stays with you. At any point in time in your day, call on him. He's there. He's giving you wise counsel. When challenges come up, he's your comforter. Don't get all in, make that ugly face. No, he's already there. All you have to do is call on him. Ask him, would you intercede? Can you give me some counseling? Can you strengthen me? Because we all face challenges. You might not want to tell nobody, but you don't have to. We all face challenges, but he's there. All you have to do is reach out to him. Put him to work. I know some of y'all thinking, what? Put the Holy Ghost to work. Verse 25 says, I have told you these things while I'm still with you. 26, but the helper. Who's the helper? He's the comforter, the advocate, intercessor, counselor, strength, stand by, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. What is, see, we look at that and we stop, but let's go a little bit deeper. He sent him in his place, in the place of Jesus, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach, he is a teacher. You in all things, and he will help you remember. He is a reminder of everything that I have told you. Man, I don't know about y'all, but I just can't look at the Holy Ghost as just a feeling. I can't look at him of, oh, the worship was so good. Oh, I got this goosebumps. Oh, the Holy Ghost is someone that changes my language from English, Spanish. To, from Kawa to from Taino to all of a sudden something that I'm speaking to him. Cheyenne, now I'm learning some Cheyenne. No, he's more than that. We, we got to take, can we just take the limits off the Holy Ghost? Can we let him just do whatever it is that he wants to do in our life? He, he's going he's gonna to shift some things. Listen. There's many of you that have gone through a level of deliverance in this place. Amen? It wasn't because of a man or a woman. The Holy Ghost is the one that leads you into deliverance. He's the one that knocks the demons out of you. Listen, even when you came up and gave your life to the Lord, it wasn't because of a man's good preaching. The Bible says that it's the Holy Ghost that draws you to him. It's not my fancy preaching. It's not my spitting into the third aisle. No. It's the Holy Ghost that draws you. Come on. The Bible says that greater is he who lives within me than he that lives in all the world. It's the Holy Ghost who lives in you than anything that the world can offer. Man, so I just want to ask you again, who is the Holy Ghost? What is his purpose on earth? The Holy Ghost is God's presence dwelling in us. I don't know about y'all, but 
That rocks me. That God would put his presence on the inside of me. And we just think, oh, it's just out there somewhere. No, it's in you. That's why Prophet Karina and I say it. When you come in here, when you come, you're bringing his presence. This is just a building. And thank God for it. But you're the one that brings his presence into this place. It's not the fancy lights. It's not all the music. Thank God that it's not the smoke. But that it's him. You bring a measure of the Holy Ghost in this place. And when we all come together corporately, man, you can see what happens. There's no limit. There's no limit to who he is and what he can do. Listen, the Holy Ghost has strict orders that come straight from the commander in chief, Abba Father, the creator of all. His orders is to be your helper, to be your comforter, to be your advocate, to be your super intercessor. To be your counselor, your strengthener, your reminder, your teacher, the giver of gifts, the giver of fruits, the giver of power, wisdom, revelation, knowledge, sealer of our relationship to the Father and the sanctifier. Come on! It's difficult for me to process how we can just stay so calm when God would literally decide To put himself, his spirit on the inside of us. Listen, we're not worthy of that. I know you think you're all that in four bags of chips. But I'm here to tell you, we're not worthy. What we are worthy is hell. But he, in his sovereignty, says, let me put the very essence who I am. In them. Wow. Wow. And and then listen, and he didn't just stop there. That's the greatness of who God is. When the Holy Ghost comes, there's gifts. Look, who doesn't like gift in here? Please raise your hand. Surprisingly. And yet, we don't use the gifts. Oh, well, what are they going to think if I activate this gift? Who cares what they think? God gave you his gift. Well, the fruits, all this stuff is happening. How can I have joy? How can I have peace? How can I have long suffering? Because it's there. It's yours. Use it. Don't get all stirred up and all in your feelings when stuff doesn't go the way you think it needs to go or what you've been praying for doesn't happen when you feel it needs to happen. Maybe you just need to give them a crazy praise in the midst of whatever you're going through. Maybe you need to just say, you know what? I really don't care what the devil's saying. I don't care what the diagnosis is. I I don't care what my bank account looks like. I'm just going to give them a praise. I'm just going to get crazy. Listen, Minister Sarai, she'll she'll play that tambourine, and she hits that thing. and And I told her one day, I said, one day, if you ever slap your man, You're going to slap them into the presence of God. I mean, because she would hit that thing. I would see the little round things just flying. And I'd be like, oh, golly. And now we got Micaiah with a tambourine. I'm like, man. And I got to say this to Pastor Maria. You should have never put that bandana back on that stick. He did not want that bandana on that stick. He was twirling it. Did it was I the only one that seen it? He, he was trying to twirl it, 
and he was banging it just like y'all do. And then Pastor Maria put that thing back on, and he was going. He was trying to take it off. Listen, why? Why do you think that a boy that young worships the way he does? Oh, well, I know, I know the natural mind. Well, because his mama, his grandpa, and, and his daddy. And, and No, it's because the Holy Spirit working on the inside of him. That's why we can say, oh, it's because of the, it's, listen, at the end of the day, the reason why kids come here and they want to worship is because the Holy Ghost is in this place and they want to worship him in spirit and in truth. Because at home, they may not get to. Teenagers, when you're in school, you don't get to do that. You should. It might rock some teachers to stop teaching what they're teaching. Oh, uh, praise the Lord. Come on. on. Holy Ghost is not a it, a thing, a tongue, a goosebump feeling, a mist, a wing, a tear running down your cheek. Holy Ghost is your friend. He is the one that you can love and get to know deeply. That's who he is. He's not a, oh, I just, oh. Look, I'll be watching y'all. Oh. Look, let me tell you. We were at the PX. I'm telling the story. And I'm talking to somebody on the phone. And I, all of a sudden, I start to talk about the worship that's in this house. And listen, if it wasn't for clothes rack, I would have got slain in the spirit. Because Pastora wasn't going to catch me. Because Pastora said, if you go down, you're gone. And there was no ushers. So the only thing I could do, because my knees buckled, because I felt the presence of the Lord so heavy, I felt the Holy Ghost as, and I'll just tell you, when Rabbi and I were on the phone, I sensed the presence of the Holy Ghost fall into PX out of all places. Now watch all of y'all going to run to the PX. Listen, he's here. He's here. And literally, my... My knees buckled. Pastor, look, that's why she's laughing. Because she see me. I was like, and I started crying. And the only thing I can do was lean on the clothes. Because if not, I would have been gone. And we've got to understand that he wants to do that everywhere and anywhere. He wants to be your friend. A friend that sticks closer than a brother. Come on, that's who he is. I said, that's who he is. When people describe the Holy Spirit just in terms of how people respond to his presence, they say, oh, well, I'm shouting because of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I got goosebumps. Listen, I see so many people go, oh, you see that? It's goosebumps. A tingling in your neck. Listen. They're missing who he really is. If you base it on just that, he is so much more. I said he is so much more. There are effects that happen in his presence, but we should relate him to him as a person, not merely a power source or a heavenly vending machine. He's not your vending machine that you go and you put an offering in and voila. No. Listen, I challenge y'all today to really seek to be in his presence. To really hunger for his presence. To really, really get serious about his presence. Not just about a feeling, 
Because let me tell you, in 35 years, Pastora has given me good feelings, but she's also made me mad. Damien, can I get an amen? Any men in the house have felt the same way? Help me out because these women are looking at me. They don't do everything right. Look, even Dolly's agreeing with me. Look, she's telling me, oh, no. Listen, but the Holy Ghost will always do everything right. He won't mess it up. He might mess you up, but he won't mess up. Because he does everything that the Father tells him to do. So if he's messing you up, it's because Daddy said, mess them up. Take that weave off. Take them eyelashes off. Take off the makeup. Take off the mask. And that's for men too. Because we can put this macho thing on. <laughs> Pastor Rosa, behave. See, she's, she, Keith. Listen, it's time that we just take it to that place of just saying, Holy Ghost, whatever you want to do. I don't want to control his presence. Come on, I said I don't want to control his presence. I'm going to tell y'all what y'all don't see. The battle that happens up here on the worship team of wanting to know, okay, Holy Spirit, when do we shift? Because they want to be in that place of understanding when to shift because he's shifting. Not because, oh, the people ain't getting into it. Because if that was the fact, then we just might as well all become cheerleaders. I'll get them all pom-poms. But no, we want to make sure we're moving by what he wants. Listen, if he doesn't, if he doesn't want me to preach, guess what? He preaches a whole lot better than me. If he doesn't want them to sing, then they don't sing. I want him to sing over me. No, see, y'all didn't get that. I want him to sing. I want him to play. I want him to be him in this place, in my life, everywhere I go. I want it to be him. And that's how we need to get to a place when whatever you want to do, however you want me to be the worker, because you're working on to the Lord. Not onto a paycheck. I'm going to tell you how important is what Jesus told her in John chapter 14. It's so important. I don't know about y'all, but when somebody repeats something to me, I, I really take notice. Because it means something. And when in scripture, I see it again, there's antennas that now are... On alert. So in the same chapter, listen to me, 10 verses later, we just went over 10 years at the Impact Center. 10 verses later, Jesus brings up the same topic. So I don't know about you, but I'm like took attention. Because in verse 25, he says, I have told you these things. Listen, have y'all ever had your mama say, I told you? Huh? Look at Fontaine, as big as he is, he's shaking his head. Because he remember mama telling him, Terrence, come on, you mamas. What happens if you tell your child, I told you? What are you expecting for them to say, whatever? I don't know about you, but when my wife tells me, I told you, I'm like, yeah, baby. I'm just telling y'all. Listen, I've learned in 35 years to pick and choose my battles. 
And when that little coward girl tells me, I told you, I'm like, all right, man. Whoa. Listen, there's no flexing. It's like, okay, baby. It's like, okay. So I know I'm not the only one. Y'all brothers might be trying to buckle up and, nah, she don't talk to me that way. Mm Mm-hmm. Look, I see some of the wives looking at their husbands. Are you listening to what he's saying? Just look at her and say, yes, baby. I'm telling y'all, I'm trying to help brothers out. So when I see that Jesus tells me, I have told you these things, it's alert. And look what he says. I have told you these things while I'm still with you. 26, but the helper, who's the helper? The Holy Ghost. Look, can y'all just do King James Version for today? The Holy Ghost. I know some of y'all people don't want to say it, but it's okay. Because he's not Casper. It's okay to say the Holy Ghost. I don't know, it just makes me want to flex when I say it like that. But the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, counselor, strengthener, stand by the Holy Spirit, whom, yes, Holy Ghost, Teacher Charmaine, I heard you. (laughs) Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, which is in his place to represent Jesus and act on Jesus' behalf, he will teach you all things, and he will help you remember everything I have. What? What? He's not asking you. He's not asking you. He's telling you. When I see that, I look at it as a command. When mama told you to do something, in that, in that mama voice that at one time was so sweet, but all of a sudden there's a couple octaves that they can hit. And all of a sudden you're like, come on, Crystal Lewis, I, I, I'll be knowing you. Look at Alexander. I told you, so to me... When Jesus specifically says, I told you, we have to follow that. It's not a choice. You're willing to do what mama told you, but when Jesus tells you, it's like, oh, I'll see what I can do. Don't get mad then when you tell him and he's like, I'll see what I can do. I'm just saying, we have this expectation that when we pray, it's got to come. You don't, where do you think you got that from? From the one that told you? Come on. So like any friend, he doesn't want to be ignored, taken advantage of, or forgotten about. He wants to interact with each believer. He promises to listen, respond, and always act in your best interest. He is always a positive, healthy influence and never a bad one. That's who he is. That's who the Holy Ghost is for you, for me. And I don't know about y'all. I'm going to take full advantage of that. I'm going to take full advantage of that. It doesn't matter what's happening in my life, I give him a praise. It doesn't matter, and and Denise can tell you because we've been going through some serious stuff, but I'm just trusting God. I literally had to tell both of them, shh, don't talk negative no more. Can I get an amen? Amen. No, not from (laughs) y'all. Pastor Rosa, she loves throwing those amens out there for me. Pastora, right? Because we've got to understand if we jump on talking negative, 
Why would the Holy Ghost move on our behalf? Because then now the devil says, oh, did you hear how they were talking, God? And God's ready to give you your breakthrough. I mean, he's ready because he's a true God and he wants to bless his children. However, if you do not apply what it says in his word, he can't do it because he can't deviate from his word. And the enemy will use that against you in the courts of heaven. And I know some of you are like, what? There's a court in heaven? If you want more teaching, we can do that. But trust me, there's a court in heaven. And the devil shows up, and he's ready to accuse the brethren, sisterins too. <laughs> and when you're talking negative about somebody else, whether they're saved or not, the enemy will use that against you. If you're stealing your, your pen from work or somebody's pen from work, he'll use that against you. If you're texting while on the job, personal, you're stealing time, he'll use that against you. Oh, see, y'all getting quiet on the brother. I'm speaking the truth. So we've got to understand, don't give the devil ammunition to accuse you when the Holy Ghost is in place and he has your best interest at heart. Mm. Mm. Only when you have a vibrant relationship with him personally will you appreciate all that he does in your life. Only then will you experience his comfort. Because he's the comforter. That's his name. You're going to only experience him when you live with him. When you talk to him. When you breathe him. When he is the essence of who you are. He will bring you comfort in the midst of the storm. That's why I said about John and Jennifer's niece. They named her Stormy. I believe she looked at the storm of life when the devil was trying to prematurely end her life. And she said, I am the storm. When was the last time you looked at the challenge in your life and you stood up full of the Holy Ghost and you said to the storm, I am the storm. Listen, I do it every day. When stuff pops up, I just tell the Holy Ghost, get him. Get him. Listen, if I did it when I was in the streets, come on, preach. Preach. Why not do it now? Now I got the Holy Ghost who's my defender. And I don't have to try to process, oh, let me get everything in place. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this before the Holy Ghost. No. Holy Ghost, can you take care of it? Can you handle it? Like I tell them, can you take care of the light work? Come on, somebody. Now, I said, now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't notice, I didn't say power. Power. I got a little hood on y'all. Power. Come on, can anybody help me out? Power. Man, when you rely on his power, worship team, as you trust and pull on his power, when you don't try to figure things out yourself and you just say, let your will be done, you're my trainer. You're my advocate, you're my helper, you're my counselor, you're my intercessor. Man, go to work. Go to work. Listen, because I learned something. I couldn't change my wife. And wives, you can't change your husband. 
but you can tell the Holy Ghost to change him. And here's what's going to happen. He's going to change you first. See, all of a sudden, the men, look, the men are getting riled up. I'm telling you. When I would literally say, oh, Holy Ghost, can you just deal with her? Can you fix her? Next thing you know, I was getting slapped around. Not by pastora. By him. Because it, I got to change you first. You can't handle what I'm going to bring you if I don't change you first. Oh, man, that was a good one. I should have got all my sisters riled up there. Come on. That sounded Spanish. So let me end with this. In Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Because I'm going to support what I just said. Now may God, the fountain of hope, Fill you to overflowing and uncontainable joy. So listen, those of y'all that try to contain this joy, which is your strength, the joy of the Lord is my... Come on, I'm glad some of y'all are learning the Bible. All of a sudden, the joy, the Holy Ghost himself, listen, you can't contain him. I know they don't have this toy anymore, and I'll finish that scripture... I remember back in the day, and classic people will remember this, we would turn the cap on this toy. Y'all remember? Come on, y'all. And all of a sudden, something would pop out. Y'all remember that? Listen, y'all stand to your feet and just ask, Holy Ghost, take the cap off. But listen, listen, listen. It's easy to say it without a demonstration. Because I told you, when that cap would come off, whatever was in there would just pop out. How many of y'all and the famous soda, Sprite, and the other one is Dr. Pepper? If you like Dr. Pepper and you're a man, that's a girl's drink. Um, I'm just, I, I, it's, I still, that, that's what I've always said. It tastes, tastes. Uh, anyway, if you shake that thing, what happens when you go to take the cap off? It goes everywhere. So listen, just ask Holy Ghost, shake me. Shake me. Take the cap off. Take it off. So listen what it says in his word. Joy and perfect peace as you trust him. And may the power of the Holy Ghost continually surround your life with his super abundance until, until you radiate with hope. So listen, if you're a Holy Ghost filled, there should be a radiance that comes off you. Remember, the Bible says, let your light so shine. That means let the radiance of the Holy Ghost radiate and touch other people. When you walk into a place, something should shift. There should be something that happens. Nothing should stay the same. So I just want to encourage you today, as you prepare to leave, to allow the Holy Ghost to shake you. Some of you need a shaking. I'm just telling you. I was processing whether to say this or not. We have to stop being pruny Christians. That you're dried up. You're shriveled up. You know you're going to get to heaven. And that's all you care about. Listen, there's people that need to see the radiance of the Holy Ghost active inside of you. There's people outside of these walls. Listen, there might be somebody even here that needs to show, needs to see you having the joy of the Lord. 
that needs to see you excited, that wants to see you excited. Let's just get excited for him. Can we do that this morning? Father God, we thank you. We exalt you. We magnify you. I thank you so much for your presence. I thank you for your promise of the Holy Ghost. I thank you that you said, for whosoever. I said, whosoever. And Lord, that those that need that fire re-sparked, need it stirred up, rekindled. And there's some here that have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And listen, the evidence of that is speaking in tongues, but there's more to it. There's more to who He is in your life. So there's some of you that have gotten satisfied with just the fizz just the buzz and the Holy Ghost wants to do so much more in your life he wants to break you out of the shell he wants to shake rattle and roll you he wants you to be the representation of the essence of God and all he's asking you can you let me go a little bit further will you let me go a little bit deeper so I encourage you today if you have not received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I want you to come up. Come on, I'm not going to tarry. I'm not going to stay long. Come on. Come on up here, Damien. Johnson, come on. Listen, and I'm going to tell you something. Since Damien's the only one that's come up, this is how I was. Because Pastora's dad told me, he said, son, this is how he said it. He said, Radimus, when you receive the Holy Ghost, your life's going to change. There's going to be so much more. This is what he quoted. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. He said, you'll receive power. And back in the days, I know some people here won't believe it, but I used to lift weights. And I was like, my mind, my ignorance. When he said power, I said, man, I'm going to be able to bench 500 pounds. Because I was ignorant. I didn't know. So I was like, oh, yeah, I want that power. John said, I said, I want that power. Whatever it's going to take. And But here's what I did. Every time they had a, a call, I came. When I was at work. I kept asking, I kept pressing, I kept pressing. And one day, I walked up, and I was praying, and the pastor's daughter-in-law, she didn't know, nobody knew, that I was hungry to receive this power. And I thought, okay, it was good just speaking in tongues. Thank God I know more now. And all of a sudden, she came up to me and she said, Brother Ray, you've been asking for the Holy Ghost, haven't you? And man, I was like, oh, I got snitched on. And all of a sudden, she called her husband. And he came over. He laid hands on me. And Terrence, I ordered Chinese food in some other tongue. Because I couldn't stop. I couldn't stop. I was in that presence. So if you're hungry... You're hungry for the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues? It's going to manifest today. Come on up here, baby girl. Come on, Pastor Rosa. Don't leave. Don't leave. If you don't have it, stay until it downloads on you. He is. He wants to fill you beyond what you can imagine. All you have to do is say yes. Anybody say yes. There's more to who he is. The Lord bless you and keep you, protect you, sustain you, and guard you. The Lord make his face shine upon you with favor and be gracious to you, surrounding you with loving kindness. The Lord lift up his countenance, his face upon you, 
with divine approval and give you peace and a tranquil heart and life. Listen, if you want more of the Holy Ghost, I encourage you to come on up. Let these leaders pray for you. Don't leave here with the same. Go with something new. We're going to worship. May the Lord continue to prosper you, bless you, watch over you, and let your hunger grow for the things of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Worship team. Sweet. 